good morning everybody as we as we proceed may i request our eminent dignitaries sri atin kapoorkar president of icit and dr varun sahani vice chancellor goa university take up their seat and address please thank you sir idea unleashed is a unique initiative of essay competition co-organized by international center goa and goa university first essay competition was held in january 2014 and we meet here today to launch its second edition with yet another interesting topic may i now request the athi support of president icit to present the winner of the paper yes sir for the sign of vice chancellor goa university distinguished members of the media gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the second edition of the icit goa university essay competition supported by vm salgaonkar institute of international hospitality management topic of the essay competition is raising the standards of higher education in goa challenges and solutions our first edition was held in 2014 the topic was innovative ideas for raising goa's human development index to the very high human development group level by 2020 Role of government in society. That was quite a long name for a talk. The objective of the essay competition is to encourage ideational thinking among the students of Goa and to get them interested in public policy issues. In addition, the practical benefit of the present edition of the essay competition is that since college students are users of higher education. This initiative will be more than just an ideation exercise. The essays can provide very useful user feedback to the authorities in charge of higher education in the state of Goa. The essays have the potential to provide new solutions to old problems. To do that, we hope the essays will generate new ideas for improving higher education in the state of Goa and will display critical and original thinking. solid arguments and offer innovative solutions and creative even out of the box ideas which can inspire decision makers in government of goa academics policy makers media and civil society the essay will be screened by a qualified person or both persons appointed jointly by icg and goa university and the top 10 essays will be presented to a three member jury for the evaluation The names of the persons screening the essays and the jury will not be revealed until the top evaluation of the jury is completed. The essays will be handed over to the screening person and the jury without revealing the name and the name of the essay writer in the college. The top three essays will receive cash prize as follows: first place twenty-five thousand, second place fifteen thousand, and third place ten thousand. Prizes will be given at the awards function to be held at IC. The essay competition is open to students under the age of 25 years and enrolled in Goa University, colleges affiliated to Goa University, BITS, Goa Campus, Goa Institute of Management, NIT, Goa, and IIT Goa. We request the press to support this essay competition by covering the press launch, the awards function. And finally, giving press coverage the ideas contained in the prize-winning essays. We thank you for attending the launch of the essay competition with press conference. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For the second edition of ICT Goa University Essay Competition 2016, we have designed a special poster. May I now request Dr. Varun Sahani, Vice Chancellor Goa University, to release the poster for the second edition of.
May I now request the Vice Chancellor of Hawaii University, Dr. Varun Sahani, to address the meeting. Sri Yasin Thakur, President of ICG, ladies and gentlemen of the press, thank you very much for spending some of your time with us this morning. Uh, we gathered and had a very easy morning with the eight different uh, press events. So we are grateful that you uh, found some time to uh, be here with us. This is, I think, an extremely important initiative. Uh, and it's really important for, I think, two or three different reasons. Uh, the most important reason, of course, is that anything that taps the ideas that exist in our younger generation, uh, any initiative that does that, uh, should of course uh, you know, be, uh, be encouraged uh, and promoted. Uh, and I think it's extremely important that uh, uh, you know, the younger generation get a sense that they and their ideas are being taken seriously uh, in the public domain. Um, and very often the young have perspectives that those who are in positions of power, authority, and influence do not. And so I think the most important reason why we should encourage this initiative is simply that, that it allows the ideas that the young have to be unleashed. I think the second important reason uh, is uh, the nature of the issue area in which we are seeking these ideas to be unleashed. The, the previous edition of the ICG Goa University uh, essay competition, the one I'm held in 2014, related to the Human Development Index. This time, uh, as has already been mentioned by Mr. Kapoorkar, uh, we are focusing you know, somewhat more narrowly uh, on the issue of higher education. And this is something which obviously resonates with all of us. Uh, all of us are either involved in higher education or have been involved in higher education or know somebody who's involved in higher education. But particularly the young, uh, you know, the, 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 the essay uh, writers are themselves all currently undergoing, uh, you know, some aspect of the higher education process. Higher education is a fundamental element, uh, obviously, uh, in human development. So from that point of view, you know, we, we are not departing uh, radically from, from 2014. The third sort of reason why I think we, this, this becomes a very important of course, is that it's a concrete example of the partnership uh, that exists uh, and that we would like to build on and develop further between the National Centre Goa and Goa University. Uh, the relationship between these two institutions, in fact, uh, can, can really lead to some wonderful synergies uh, if we sort of, you know, think about it in a, in a systematic and purposeful way. Uh, it's extremely important that the public ideas emerging in Goa uh, are projected, have an impact ultimately even in the teaching and research program of the university itself. Uh, so, you know, I mean, ideas about Goa emerging from Goa, these are the sorts of things that we really should, should have an interest in. As a, as an academic, as a vice chancellor, of course, uh, you know I have particular interest in the in the topic of this this year's essay competition. Uh, I think anything that can raise the standards of higher education uh, in Goa uh, more widely in our country uh, is something that you know we need to ponder on very seriously. Um, you know, I think. I have come to believe over the years that there are really 12 core challenges that face all Indian universities. And that really is irrespective of whether that university is old or new, you know, big or small, or whether it's a, you know, a state university or a central university, whether it's a unitary university or a federated university, whether it's a, indeed a public university or a private university. I, mean, I think that there are a bunch of common challenges uh, and they relate ultimately to the social purpose of the university itself, which I would suggest is uh, you know, the production and transmission of knowledge. 
and uh, a range of associated skills. You know, if, if that's the reason why universities exist, that is their social purpose. And as long as sort of we, we understand that, focus upon that, uh, you, know, you can be certain that universities will do, uh, you know, will be up to the task that society places upon them. Um, also, I believe universities are critical institutions in society because ideally they balance the universal with the local. Because universities have to simultaneously be at the cutting edge of universal knowledge. Uh, but at the same time, uh, a good university uh, also at all times across a range of disciplines seeks to remain relevant to the needs of the society within which it exists, within which it is embedded. So that kind of you know, bringing together of the universal and the local, the university is a particularly uh, good sort of place to do it. So I think that is my way, which is one of the reasons why ICG is so important. Because you can take ideas that are universally relevant, but also then, you know, bring them and locate them towards both that. The, the wings that are associated with universal knowledge, the roots that are you know, embedded in a particular soil. Uh, the 12th the board challenges I'll not bore you with because we will be incorporating them in the, you know, in the, in the handout that we will be issuing and putting on the website uh, where we are going to sort of you know, be spelling out to some extent uh, you know, the sorts of ideas that uh, the various contestants in the, in the, uh, the essay competition could dwell on and take a look One of those ideas, all of them, and so on and so forth. So I, I won't. I won't get into that in any great detail right now. We, you know, the question and answer session maybe we can talk about one or two of those ideas. But I think all of them together, these, these contemporary challenges uh, are challenges that you know the higher education system has to square in place. Uh, one of the things, of course, is that we always superficially believe that there's a kind of a tension between uh, you know standards of quality and uh, Access, and, you know, one of the challenges for us is in fact to enlarge access and maintain standards and quality at the same time. Uh, that's that's essential in our country, in our society. You know, uh, access issue is going to remain important and relevant at least for another couple of generations. Till, till there are, you know, there's no child left who comes from a family uh, where education is not already prevalent. Today we know that there are many first generation. In our, in our education system. So the question of access and, we, and one of our challenges must be to somehow bring those access issues uh, and the quality and standard issues together and treat them as being fundamentally organically related to each other. I think enough said for the moment. Uh, I think uh, we, uh, I'm sure that uh, both Mr. Kakorkar uh, and I will be happy to uh, you know, engage with you any issues that Thank you, sir. While the floor is now open for questions, I would, I would request the media representative to stick to the topic of the essay competition. Raising the standard of higher education in Goa, challenges and solutions. Please. About, uh, to enlarge excellence and maintain the standards in quality. Just elaborate.
reskilling opportunities, providing opportunities to reskill. Uh, as we all know, the job market now is a very, very dynamic, fluctuating job market. The old system where you took one job and you stayed with it for your entire career, you stayed in the same organization for your entire career, that, that's really yesterday's story. So our young today really have to be provided with an education system where you can constantly be skilled and retrain yourself. Technology moves so fast, you know, uh, how do you keep up to date with technology, for example? You need to be skilled for that. So that becomes, I think, a core challenge uh, for, for the education system, but particularly the higher education system. Also, if you think about it, we live in a society uh, in which the demographic profile uh, is improving, you know, is leading to, uh, you know, uh, much longer living and aging society. And, uh, you know, we talk about India and Goa and a very young population, and that's true. But that does not mean that the spread is not increasing. As it is becoming reasonable to expect that people will live into their 80s and maybe 90s, uh, you know, we need to therefore think about how the educational system can provide access to second careers, uh, lifelong learning for all who want lifelong learning. So in other words, uh, the very talent of the university is changing. You've got to cater to the needs of the young, thinking about this you know, dynamic and fluctuating job market. Or at the same time, you've got to think about the, uh, the elder generation, senior citizens. Many of them, after having had a fulfilling career, now want to do something different. Wherever they go, it has to be ultimately provided by the higher education system. You know, linking industry and user organizations to the university system is another very critical challenge uh, because, you know, uh, this whole question about whether students graduating from universities are employable is a question that is constantly raised from an economic point of view. You know, whether they're going to be employable or not is going to depend to some extent about whether we can build organic links between user organizations and industry, those who will ultimately White job. Uh, and by the way, thinking about jobs, not just job, even sort of you know, a whole range of entrepreneurial skills and capabilities. But for all of that, we need to sort of link up uh, much, in a much more organic way in the university system as a whole uh, with the organizations. And that's where sort of in the context of Goa it becomes critical because it's a very well defined uh, job market in Goa. You know, we know what the organizations are. Like to provide the job. So the extent to which they can be involved uh, you know, with our higher education system uh, organically, that makes it much more likely that the students will be down to be equipped to take jobs as soon as they graduate. Uh, just four ideas, I can give you a whole bunch more, but uh, I hope I've answered your question uh, on the access point. I'm Sanat from Goal, the National Institute. Uh, I have come across many students who complain that uh, many of the companies want experienced candidates and they face problems when they go for interviews. As the saying goes, a master was always one master was also a beginner once. So I come across many such youth who complain that the, the companies require experienced professionals. Job experience. Job experience. And it's very okay. difficult for a recent graduate to have that job experience in the current system. But that's where we have to think about making internship, etc., a much more organic part of the education itself that we provide uh, even from the undergraduate levels itself. Uh, you know, if, if we can make internship a regular part uh, so that, you know, for instance, the vacation period is not just spent sort of, you know, uh, in recreational activities, but in fact is purposefully put, uh, you know, in the world of work. Then, when these uh, young men and women graduate, uh, they would be able to show that they have a certain body of experience with them. They would have worked, and that then, they would begin to sort of be much more attractive. So in a way, that's exactly the challenge. You hit upon a very critical point by your question. 
is how do we bring the world of study and the world of work together? Uh, you know, so far we've tended to treat them sequentially. You live in a world of study, and then at certain stage you move from that into a world of work. Right? But the relationship need not be a sequential. It should in fact be a phase where there's an overlap, it's in fact. Uh, so you're doing both, you're, you're working and you're studying at the same time. Think about typically medical education. In medical education, the world of work and the world of study are commingled. Right here, uh, as, as a young medical student, uh, you, you are in a hospital, you are already beginning to perform a particular function in an organization. At the same time, you are learning. So that's the real challenge. How can we sort of take something which has existed for so long in one branch of education, which is medicine? How can we bring some of that into other branches? create similar kinds of opportunities. Uh, that's the challenge. And, uh, and this, by the way, is true not just of you know, what we in India call professional education, meaning medicine, engineering, the law, and, uh, and such of professions, accountancy, and so on, journalism. But in fact, also in, uh, in sort of what is called general and non professional education. There's no reason why out there as well we cannot try to bring and practice of intervention. Right. So those are the things on which collectively we need to work. And those are the things on which we would like to get ideas, precisely from those who will, you know, be writing their essay. You know. Let, let's let's hear what they have to say. How would they view this whole question? You know, uh, this is precisely the question related to job, you know, job applicants being asked, "What's your work experience? If you don't have any work experience, you know, we want to employ you." How would somebody who's young, who's in the system, view something like that? What sort of solutions would they have? If, sir, if, sir, if you announce the other syllabus or the curriculum, I am Kanish Dawdekar from Bangalore, Open Newspaper. Sir, our syllabus or curriculum is framed by academicians and industries, they require work. So if you uh, take help of industries or the person who works in industry in framing the curriculum or syllabus, do you feel this gap or this problem can be solved? To some extent, that already exists in many of our universities, including Goa University. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the board of studies, many boards of studies, there are in fact some representatives from these organizations who are part of the board of studies. Uh, there are two or three aspects here that, you know, on the top of one's head one can suggest to you. One is that there needs to be, uh, I believe, a certain degree of quid pro quo out there. Is that if you are involved in the board of studies and the helping in the framing of a particular curriculum, then your organization should also have a certain responsibility to say, okay, we will employ at least so many numbers of those who are graduating from this program. Very often we find that the critical board is quite excessive. So there's a contribution to the curriculum, but there is no corresponding kind of obligation of them providing employment, providing jobs or opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, we're not saying that. Everybody will get over and get into the world of work, they have to prove themselves that. You know, we understand that. But at least that entry into the door, you know, at least being able to get into the room and get your first chance at a job, that, that's not really my question. But, but that's only one way of looking at it. I mean, I think uh, also apart from this whole question of board studies and that. Uh, or if in teaching also, if you involve some person from industry or something like I am serving. Same thing if you be this will help much We are we are examining these sorts of issues exactly. I think some solutions are there in other university systems outside of country. Uh, for example, they have what are called professors of practice. Professors of practice are those who come because they 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 don't they're not really contributing that much to the knowledge of the contributing to the skills element of the very part. Skills that they have learned uh, in a practical way by working in a particular area, you know, sort of transmitting those skills to the students. So, if, as, see, as long as it is a question of knowledge itself, there, you know, we have very well established legal parameters. There's a minimum educational requirement, for example. And we are responsible for any university to make somebody a, a teacher who does not meet those minimum. But when it comes to the practical element, the skills element, there we do not need to have this minimum education requirement. 
requirement. This is something who is just say got a bachelor's of engineering degree, B, but then has worked you know, very well in the industry for 25 years, may be able to contribute huge amounts uh, in terms of skills and of course associated knowledge with those skills. So those are sort of the sort of solutions we need to think about. Uh, and of course, you know, it's possible in, uh, in Goa given its advantages small, wealthy state, very good university, to actually innovate in some of these areas and see how we can sort of, you know, deal with these issues. Uh, so, yes. So, right now you have got this, this you've got some interesting person or something, science, at least, chemistry, physics or something. I'm not going to be answering specific questions on Goa University right now. So, you can keep asking them in all sorts of ways. Uh, you know, I'm giving you generic answers to the questions you're asking. A specific thing, you know, we at some stage arrange a press conference on the university campus. And we'd be delighted to see you again and then answer very specific questions on the university. But in a generic, broad sense, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving you some common sense solutions to the problem, which is a very real problem that you have raised. Uh, you know, you can either get specialists from the world of work into your board of studies where they play a role in the clinical curriculum. Uh, or you can actually set up specific positions where you bring in people with a full range of industry and professional experience. Teachers, those are some of the things, ways in which we can deal with. I think the next question should be to Mr. Kakor. Let me start by asking you about the The issue of providing access to education while maintaining quality of education is best exemplified by the expansion of IITs. We are trying to make IIT accessible to more people by creating more seats, more IITs. But at the same time, our concern is being expressed are the new IITs having the same quality of education which has been for all these years, the original for IITs. So this IIT best exemplifies the issue of expansion of access by maintaining quality of access. And that's of course a very small example of this issue. But when we say access to education, it's not just a very top it's access to every member of the society. Professor one, Sani has even gone to the extent of say also access to people who are differently able. So we need to have, we need to ensure access is given to, uh, to all sections of society. But at the same time, maintaining the quality of the education. Because as you expand, the, the ability to maintain a standard comes under a lot of stress. So that's a challenge not only for us in Goa, India, but all over the world. That is one point. The second issue about uh, the connection between industry and, uh, and academia. Uh, now we have to find our own solutions. But sometimes we can get inspiration from models that work in other countries. And a good example is, is Germany, where they have a very strong, vigorous system of apprenticeship in Germany which is very strong and it provides a transition for uh, students to enter industry. And it's not a it's not a global system, it's not a nominal system. It's a very effective, very well designed conceived system where both academia and industry, German industry have a stake in that apprenticeship system. Now maybe there are some features of the system which are which can be employed many other countries in the world in India. So maybe we should start looking what can be used in India from that general model of country. So there are ways and means of getting inspiration from the educational models in other parts of the world. But finally we have to find a world solution. It's not possible to transplant a foreign model in our country, both safety, but the context is different, the people are different, the circumstances are different. So there are certain features which can be replicated. So these are two 